Long ago, the great hero and the demon lord engaged in a most colossal duel, and at the end, it looked as if both perished in the aftermath. Or did they? Years after, a young boy named Blade joins a prestigious hero academy with hopes of living a normal life. However, his fate won't let him rest, for the great hero has yet more evil to defeat. The story begins with a battle, the great hero facing against the demon king himself. The stakes are high for the great hero who needs to defeat his nemesis and put an end to his madness. With a smirk on his face, the demon king makes the first move and throws a meteorite his way. However, the great hero counters by destroying the meteorite with a small stone he picked up from the ground. He then asks the demon king to stop with the cheap moves and to settle things once and for all by going all out. Confident he'll win, the demon king agrees and both men chant their spells attacking each other with full force. However, they quickly lose their strength and struggle to keep their footing. As a final clash, the two walk towards each other and drive their swords through each other. Unable to sustain the wound, both combatants fall to the ground, resulting in the annihilation of both their powers. The great hero's heart swells with gratitude in his final moments as he realizes it's finally over. The scene then flashes to the present day, where students are excitedly hurrying towards the Rosewood Hero Academy while greeting each other. Amidst them is Blade, an optimistic young man overjoyed at sight of his fellow students. He plans on making friends and living life as an ordinary person. With these goals in mind, Blade walks into the building and starts greeting everyone in the hallway. However, other students don't share the same enthusiasm and find him weird. Unaware of their comments, Blade approaches a group of four students and introduces himself. The group returns the favor. They introduce themselves as Kasim, Clay, Jessica, and Claire, asking Blade if he would like to be friends with them. Blade is overjoyed about the proposal and can't believe making friends is so easy. However, the commotion grabs the attention of Arnest Flaming, the top scorer in the school who is strict about rules. She scolds Blade for making a ruckus in the hallway, but Blade seems unbothered and approaches her, introducing himself. Never having seen him before, Arnest is confused and finds it hard to believe that he is a transfer student. She doesn't think Blade has the chops to be here, saying the Academy only admits those who aspire to be heroes to protect this world. Blade angers her by revealing that he is only here to make friends and he doesn't really care about being a hero. But before she can really bash him, Blade suddenly remembers that he has to go to the Headmaster's office. He requests Arnest to show the way, who helps and takes him to the office. Introducing him as a brat who lost his way and was on the verge of tears, Arnest steps inside the headmaster's office with Blade, only to find the king sitting in his chair. Arnest immediately kneels down, but Blade doesn't. She grabs him and apologizes to his majesty on his behalf. However, his majesty simply laughs and tells Arnest that he has heard all about her from the previous headmaster, revealing himself to be the new headmaster. At this, Arnest perks up, launching into a series of comments about how she is honored to learn from him, but his majesty stops her in the middle and asks her to leave. He tells her that he has to speak to Blade in private. She looks at Blade annoyingly and heads out. Once she leaves, Blade blames the king for getting him on Arnest's bad side. But his majesty has other things on his mind. He wants Blade to regain his powers as a hero, but the latter reminds him that he's only here to be a normal person. He tells him that the Demon King is gone now and his majesty agrees, but he fully believes in the resurrection of the great hero's powers, because Blade is the great hero. Blade heads out and runs into Arnest again at the advanced class training area. Arnest is shocked to find him, but Blade explains that he took all the lower classes tests and they told him to come here. Arnest doubts the legitimacy of his admission, saying that the academy does not accept half-hearted people like him. Blade tells her not to call him half-hearted because he is dead serious about making 100 new friends. He heads out to each student in the class, introduces himself and asks them to be friends. Infuriated by his casual attitude, Arnest asks Blade to listen to her. He surprises her by patting her head and saying that he is listening. Not expecting the sudden closeness, Arnest's face becomes flushed. However, the moment fades out soon when Sophie comes over and tells them that the instructor has asked everyone to assemble. However, Arnest is not interested in the lesson plans and lets the instructor know that she is going to test the ability of the transfer student. The instructor lets her do it. Arnest brings out an armor of enchantment metal and a box of swords. Blade must slice through it, which is something everyone in the advanced class can do to prove himself to everyone here. Arnest also threatens him that if he fails to do so, she'll have to admit him for illicit entry. She goes on about how the advanced class is a whole different level. Curious, Blade asks exactly what level. Not expecting the question, Arnest fumbles and says 3. 
Her answer gives Blade direction as he holds his sword straight and says level 2 should be enough, and gets ready to attack. The students are confused by the shape of his fighting spirit since it appears as the famed Dragon series, the same one as the Great Hero. Blade increases his power, which pushes away Arnest and all the other students. Once at full power, Blade launches at the armor with the Dragon Eater attack, destroying it and the wall behind in a million pieces. Unable to contain his power, his sword breaks into pieces as well. With her armor destroyed, Arnest walks up to him and asks him who in the world is he? Suddenly, Blade notices everyone staring at him in shock, which puts him on the defensive. He tries to pass himself as ordinary, but the students find it hard to believe. Later, all the students are eating lunch in the cafeteria, with Arnest sitting alone. Blade brings his food and sits with Arnest at her table. He waves at his friends to come over as well, but they turn down his offer. Confused, Blade turns to Arnest for an explanation. She tells him that the table is reserved only for her since everyone is afraid of her. Curious, Blade asks her why, but she ignores him. Later, while enjoying his curry, he thanks Arnest for all the things she's done for him. Taken back by his out-of-the-blue gratitude, Arnest asks him why. Blade clarifies that it's for being friends. Arnest is immediately embarrassed and says she doesn't mind being his friend. Later at night, Arnest celebrates making her first friend. However, her celebrations are interrupted when her sword hanging on the wall begins to shake. The scene then flashes to Arnest's childhood, where the same sword is in a glass box. She walks up to it as the sword tells her to surrender herself to it. She follows and grabs the sword. Immediately on contact, the sword unleashes its true power and turns her hair red. The demon in the sword orders her to destroy, slash, and burn. The scene then flashes back to the present, where Arnest is holding the sword and asking it to shut up, which seems to do the trick. The next morning, Arnest is training with Leonard, and they both clash their swords furiously. Blade is enjoying the fight and cheers for them. Leonard prepares to blast Arnest, but she sends him flying. However, even with the fight ended and Leonard on his knees, Arnest tries to attack him but stops her sword an inch away from his face. The students started talking that she has been kind of scary lately. Still ready to go, Arnest calls out her next opponent, and Sophie steps up. She tries to initiate a conversation, but Arnest doesn't listen and begins to attack her with her sword. Sophie defends nicely and attacks her with bare fists. Arnest fires back with a fire tornado, which Sophie dodges. However, she admits defeat the next second. Disappointed but still eager to fight, Arnest calls out Blade next. She wants to take on his Dragon series, but Blade is concerned for her condition. Arnest ignores him and urges him to step up, but right then she sees a fire and faints with Blade rushing to her aid. Later at the school's clinic, Arnest is unconscious on the bed while Blade asks the doctor to make her better like she did with him, but she says she can't do anything. She can heal injuries and diseases from the brink of death, but spells and curses are outside her expertise. Right then, Arnest wakes up and asks about what happened. Blade tells her that she passed out. Concerned, she asks him if she did something awful, but Blade comforts her. The doctor asks her to rest, but Arnest gets up and tells her that she feels better now. The doctor orders her to get back in bed, but Arnest asks her to get out of her way. The doctor doesn't seem to budge either, so Blade steps in, asking the doctor that if Arnest feels okay, it's fine to let her go. He'll keep an eye on her. The doctor seems fine with that arrangement and lets them go. Blade escorts Arnest out in the hallway, supporting her, but as soon as Arnest hears some students in the distance, she lets go of his support, not wanting to appear weak in front of everyone. As she walks away, Blade calls her back and lets her know that she can lean on him since they're friends. However, Arnest doesn't react to his offer to help. Instead, she asks him not to tell anyone what he heard in the infirmary and walks off. At night, Blade breaks into the Academy's record room. He goes through the Rosewood Academy's data on a computer and searches for Arnest's sword, the demon sword Osmodius. A drone tries to stop him for trespassing, but Blade slices it into pieces without even batting an eye. Later in the auditorium, he asks Arnest to talk him in private, but she doubts his intentions. Blade explains that it's because he knows the secret behind her sword. This attracts Arnest's attention. Outside, Blade tells her about the sword and about how there's a demon inside fighting for control. Blade asks Arnest about how she got it. Arnest tells him she stumbled onto the sword in her family's possession during her childhood, and ever since then she's been hearing the demon's voice telling her to burn and destroy. Blade tells Arnest that there is a way to put an end to it, but Arnest says it's too risky. She needs to fight the demon and get it to acknowledge her as its owner, but she's afraid that if she fails, something sinister would be unleashed on the world. However, Blade comforts her and lets her know that he'll take care of it. At first, she's shocked, but she remembers his show of power from the training session and decides to put her faith in him. 
Later that night, Arnis summons the demon with her sword, while Blade stands watch in the corner. Confident, she steps inside the sword and comes face to face with Osmodius and asks him to acknowledge her as his owner, but he refuses to do so without a fight. The two clash swords with Arnis emerging as the winner. The next day, Arnis steps in the hallway with her hair down and a changed demeanor, shocking everyone. She seems relaxed now, with the demon taken care of, thanks to Blade, who proudly watches her interact with other students. And on this positive note, our recap for today comes to an end. How did Arnis' family get into possession of this demon sword? And how will Blade's and Arnis' relationship progress further in the series? I guess we'll find out in the next episodes. For now, if you enjoyed it, drop us a like, share it with your otaku friends, and subscribe to Anime Soreo for more awesome animes like this recapped on your feed. With that said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace!